Good morning. Today, I'm going to share this paper published in Nature Material 2017. The title is about a little difficult title. Colony Stimulate Factor 1 Receptor is a central component of the foreign body response to biomaterial implants in lozons and non-human primates. Also, one of the authors is, as you know, Robert Langer, one of the authors, and then corresponding author is Daniel G. Anderson. Yeah, he is a very famous guy about the biomaterial and immune response study. So before starting this experiment, uh, let's see why they start this experiment. Initially, you know, we have many diabetic patients, right? For the diabetic patient, people want to make uh, pancreatic isolates, which means that the pancreatic tissue, they don't work properly for the diabetic patient. So they want to implant pancreatic cell to secrete insulin, right, to secret insulin. The problem is, if you implant pancreatic cell in certain third people's body, if this pancreatic cell is not coming from his or her own body cell, they can cause severe immune response, right? So for preventing that situation, they want to encapsulate this cell spheroid with arginate, okay? And then they inject this arginate with pancreatic isolate and then implant it. But the problem is, okay, they can, from the nude mouse system, it works very well. The, the diabetic nude mouse, they can be cured because of the insulin secretion from this pancreatic isolate. But for the non-nude mouse, normal mouse system, something wrong. So when they found why this system, this strategy is continuously falling down, they checked that after retrieving this cell plus arginate complex, and then when they analyzed it, they found out that they can cause severe fibrosis surrounding this arginate. And then they, when they even implant without cell, or only arginate material, also severe fibrosis happen. So basic concept is that they want to do some, some therapy, cell therapy to the human patient, especially diabetic patient. But when they implant cell plus biomaterial, they can induce failure. And then when they investigate the underlying, why, underlying region, why the system came to be failure, they found out severe fibrosis happen surrounding this biomaterial, and then because of that, the, this total system can be failure. So from this uh, background, they start this experiment. And then before starting this experiment, I want to share one figure for your understanding. Now I'm preparing this figure for the review paper. So let's imagine, if you implant biomaterial in the tissue, let's say skin, and what happened? First, monocyte from the blood vessel, they are recruited. And then there are many, another cell type like antigen presenting cell, which includes macrophage, dendritic cell, and if you look at detail, B cell also can be acting as a APCs. So their major role is immune cell from the monocyte, when they, are, when they are coming out from the blood, which is differentiated to the macrophage, or called macrophage. And another APC cell, dendritic cell, they, they meet this biomaterial. And then when this biomaterial, they are released, not from their degradation rate, but also from the enzymatic behavior of the fibroblast or macrophage, other immune cell, these debris from the biomaterial can be engulfed, engulfed by the, this APC cell, right? 
which means APC cell capture antigen or a certain molecule from biomaterial. And then it's virus of APC low. APC is antigen presenting. They should deliver certain molecule from biomaterial to the lymph node. So this APC move to the lymph node. So in the lymph node, they have two different area. One is uh, T cell zone. The, the other one is B cell zone. Okay. Initially from T cell zone, this recruited APCC with biomolecular antigen, they meet T cell. And then T cell activate, activated. Meanwhile, also this APC can direct contact to the B cell, and the B cell is differentiated to the plasma cell. Plasma cell is antibody secreting cell, right? So, and then this T cell also regulate the B cell differentiation using T folic, T follicular homing cell, and the Th1 cell, Th2 cell, Th17 T regulator cell. There are four or five types of T cell can which can regulate the B cell differentiation. And then this kind of plasma cell differentiate from B cell, and the T cell differentiate to Th1 to 17 or T leg cell. They again move to the original tissue through the blood. And then, when you imagine, CD8 cell, cytotoxic cell, which can capture or kill the cell of target cell, as well as CD4 helper cell, which is, so when you imagine TH1 to 17, it's all CD4 plus TH helper cell. And then, cytotoxic T cell, another cell type, T cell, T leg cell, they are all coming in this surrounding area, and then they can secrete cytokine or antibody together that they can cause fibros fibrosis or giant cell localization. So like this phenomenon, this is totally understanding about the, when you implant something in the skin or in a certain tissue, this is an adaptive immunity, okay? If we only focus on innate immunity, this is on only number one. How macrophage or dendritic cell and neutrophil can react this biomaterial? But adaptive immunity always coming from the, the movement of the biomolecule to the lymph node. In the lymph node, the adaptive immunity cell, B cell, T cell activated, and they can recruit it again to the, your original implant tissue, and then they can cause fibrosis, giant multinuclear cell, and any kind of um, biomaterial tissue interaction. Okay. After knowing this phenomenon, let's look at our, our paper, and it's more easy to understand. So first, they implant the arginate. The size is around uh, 500 mi micrometer, let's say. Uh, scale bar, two millimeter. This two millimeter is around 500 micrometer sphere they are making, okay? As you know, the sphere is size around one, one or 200 micrometer, right? So they making more larger size of the arginate sphere and then implant it. So this time, they don't use any cell here. They only implant the arginate sphere, okay? And then they put this arginate in IP, in the body of the mouse, abdominal, abdominal region. And then they, they can observe many cells are recruited surrounding this sphere, okay? This DAPI is not coming from original cell inside of the sphere, they are, after implanting two weeks, some cells are recruited surrounding this arginate, okay? And then they check the qPCR, gene expression level, from this retrieved, collected sphere from the body of nude mouse, okay? They lyse this arginate plus attaching cell complex 
and then do the PCR. And then they check this marker for macrophage, neutrophil, B cell, fibrosis, dendritic cell, NK cell, and T cell. CD4, helper T cell, CD8, cytotoxic T cell, FOXP3, T regular cell. Okay? Here, NS means no significant from dendritic cell, NK, T cell. N is non implant, just normal tissue. M is mag implant. They do the surgery and the index align. A, they do the surgery and implant arginate. Okay? So M is, you can imagine, sham operation. And then people can argue how you can get this kind of cell when you do not implant the material. They said they are using the fat tissue surrounding those areas. Okay, so this N and, N and M, not from the material, that is coming from the, the surgery site fat tissue. Okay, so when you found that, what kind of gene are most significantly changed? Macrophage, neutrophil, B cell, fibroblast. What other NK T cell no change? Oh, so this is very uh, impact sc impactful screening, right? So when you implant something, this is a basic way how you understand it. What kind of cell are recruited after two weeks? Oh, and then, oh, this is very good screening. And then they confirm again by this IH, IH, ICC. This is arginate and the recruit cell surrounding the arginate. And then macrophage marker detected. B cell detected. Alpha SMA, fibroblast marker little detected. Combined together. And then when they check another cell type like neutrophil, soon more cell actin, and overray or so, you can see. And then this is without material, with material. With material, you can imagine this uh, green one is um, uh, B cell behavior. Okay, they, this is B cell. B cell is more recruited surrounding the bio, biomaterial microenvironment. So why they look at the B cell here? Actually, well, I'm not sure they do, they do this, this experiment initially focus on the B cell or not. I'm not sure. But when you look at the Linux figure, they more focusing on B cell law. So here, they, as a representative, they compare the intact tissue or implant tissue with arginate biomaterial. B cell is more recruited. Okay. Anyhow, this figure one is very good. So when you do some experiment about in vivo, this is the one way to figure out. So let's say if we want to focus just macrophage, and then people just look at the macrophage. But this paper. They screen out what is the major underlying mechanism, the arginate induced fibrosis failure. Okay. And then next, they look at detail. Previously, on two weeks data only. And then now they track over time from four weeks uh, up to four weeks. IP space. IP space is the space near the surgery area. Fibrous is tissue, this is IP spaces, you can imagine fluid from the IP, intrapenitorial region, okay? And then fibrous is tissue, fat tissue in IP region. And then on capsule is when you retrieve or collect the sphere, you can see, you can get the cell on that sphere, right? So this is three different region, fluid, and then surrounding tissue on that tissue and cell on that material. When you track the IP fluid, B cell, initially 30%, they are decreased. But macrophage neutrophil little in enhanced after implantation. So people think that oh immune cells are recruited more. So we can imagine, right? Because when you do some surgery or implant something, 
they always secrete many chemokines to recruit immune cells. But interesting point is that B cell number is decreasing. Very interesting. Because when you imagine our previous figure about how adaptive immunity happened, B cell also should be recruited from the lymph node to the implantation, implanted, implantation site, right? But we can easily imagine that their fraction can increase, but they are decreased. But even though they are decreasing the cell fraction, the absolute amount of cell number can enhance, right? So here we didn't know that, but let's imagine. Anyhow, cell population change. And then when you look at the fibrous tissue surrounding your material, all of the macrophage, neutrophil, and even the B cell number enhanced, and B cell population enhanced. And then let's say when you combine these three, they should not exceed 100%, right? Which means when you imagine day one, another 70% is what? Maybe T cell, NK cell, or other kind of cell from the above figure one, right? You can, you can imagine. But this is a, they show as a fraction, population. But in front of the population, the macrophage, neutrophil, and B cell are increasing over time. Surrounding tissue. And then when you look at the own capsule cell fraction, this is very interesting. Initially, day one, monocyte, they are majorly coming from the blood vessel, right? They are not differentiated at that time to the macrophage. So monocyte, major, and then little neutrophil, macrophage. No B cell or r plasma active fibroblast. But after four days later, most of the monocyte differentiate to the macrophage. And then neutrophil number also enhanced. And the little B cell. And then over time, B cell number and then r plasma fibroblast number fraction enhanced while decreasing macrophage. Okay? So we can imagine the lower of the B cell and the fibro fibrosis can happen after one, one week later. Their major player period is at seven days. Okay? We can catch this idea. And then they analyze the tissue to expression level using nanostring. Mm. So nanostring, this all macrophylated gene. So mag is saline, day one, day 28. Most of the macrophage marker is enhanced. Not only M1, but also M2, Rg1, interleg one beta. And you see, go up and little maintain. Rg1 continuously going up. TNF alpha, little bit going, going up, tendency. So regardless M1 and M2, the old marker is enhanced. When they check the neutrophil marker, also enhanced. The measure of neutrophil is capture the antigen plus secreting many chemokines to recruit other immune cells. Okay? So CX cell 5, CX cell 2, 1 beta, and Li6G is a marker of neutrophil. They are all enhanced. And then next, they check the B cell and alpha sigma fibroblast. Okay. And then ozone tissue, fat tissue, and on the capsule, after seven days later, the B cell marker enhanced. Okay, CD819. B cell is more recruited. Near the tissue, on the your material. And then similarly, the alpha sigma fibroblast active also enhanced at seven days. So they want to link between B cell and fibroblast. Okay? They try to link it. Because as so from the in vivo sample, when you see some trend like one cell is correlated to the other cell time period, and we can easily imagine they are correlate, they can correlate each other, right? This is a basic knowledge, basic hypothesis. So here, figure two, the immune response to the implant by mature arginate is long-lived. Even though you implant your material, 
the immune response is not three or seven days and turning off. They turning on and on again up to one month. Yeah. Maybe when you look at the two months also you can see this kind of trend change. Okay. And then they look at the fibrosis. Mm. They are using very special platform. So you can see this white dot is more fibrosis structure. And then they utilize a lot of knockout mouse. B knockout, no B cell. TB, T cell, B cell, no. RAC2, R is T cell, B cell, macrophage, no. Nothing. Okay. They remove B cell, T cell, B cell together, T cell, B cell, macrophage together. Compared to white type, when you remove B cell, fibrosis decrease. But when you again remove the T cell, recover. The, the underlying meaning is that T cell, you have T regulator cell. They are orchestrator to govern the total immune system. So when you remove the T cell, this T leg cell to compro compromise fibrosis is gone. So that is why they are all recovered. But when you remove again the macrophage, no fibrosis. So we can say that B cell is important for determining fibrosis, and then macrophage also important. Okay? T cell also important, but they are not helping for um, they are not helping for decreasing fibrosis. Okay. And then they look at the for confirming the fibrosis, they, they look at the alpha sigma active protein level, B cell knockout, and B cell T cell plus macrophage knockout mouse, or alpha sigma level decreasing, which is a marker of fibrosis, decrease of fibrosis. Then this is their quantification. Alpha sigma actin decreasing, and then not only alpha sigma actin, collagen A, collagen A2, the ECM, the major component of ECM for of fibrosis decreasing. Okay? And then this IBS is this quantification. Yeah, this quantification is coming here. Okay. And then when they when they look at the rear image, histolog histological image from the HA and MT staining. So here Mark just without any sur just surgery and cell line, wild type you can see this. This is arginate material, and then this is capsule. Mm. Not easy to see here. And then when you removed knockout, actually this from this image is it's not easy to see. But uh, let's see this. When you imagine this is the fibrosis lay thickness, this is larger than this one, but actually I didn't see very detail about the fibrosis capsule thickness here. But they mention in manuscript fibrosis thickness is decreasing. Maybe when they don't show high magnifying image, I, I cannot see. And then lock to this macrophage removing cell. Also, they mention decrease of fibrosis compared to this wild type. And then they checked the cell from the capsule, the sphere, arginate. Wild type, they have high amount of cell number of macrophage. And then surrounding tissue and on the capsule together, when you look at the own capsule cell or macrophage, High amount. But when you remove the B cell, decreasing. Remove macrophage again, decreasing. Not only macrophage, neutrophil B cell number or are decreasing. So we can say that this fibrosis can be governed by the B cell, T cell, and the B cell macrophage. And the B cell macrophage also they are correlating each other. So <coughs> we can say that Innate immune macrophage function is required 
or fiber of sheets of arginate. And the people will ask, when you want to say innate immunity, you have to challenge with the neutrophil depletion, right? Neutrophil also one of the key innate immunity. So in the supplementary data, they remove the neutrophil immunity, but the fibrosis is maintained. So they reject the lower of the neutrophil immunity. I will show you later. And then here, yeah, as a main figure, they show wild type. Uh, previously, they implanting their material in, uh, sorry, up to figure two, they implant the material in IP, intrapenitorial area, your abdominal area. But from figure three, they implant it in subcutaneous. Yeah, IP over subcutaneous, both of them. And then figure four, they implant them in subcutaneous. They, they want to confirm again. So why type fibrosis? When you remove neutrophil, more fibrosis happen. But when you remove macrophage, neutrophil macrophage together or, or are gone, fibrosis gone. So they confirm again the lower of the macrophage to determine the fibrosis. Why type? cell have a lot of macrophage and neutrophil and the B cell. But interesting point is that when you remove neutrophil, no change of macrophage, okay, decrease of neutrophil, but no change of B cell. Okay. But only when you remove macrophage, number decreasing, neutrophil no change, but B cell number is decreasing. Both of them are decreasing because when you because you remove already the macrophage. So they want to link the, between the macrophage and B cell. Okay? So you can imagine why macrophage is removed, B cell recruitment to the capsule is decreasing. Is their question. And then this is immune cell population percentage, and then they, re, they, co, uh, they count the real absolute number of cells per the each sphere. They found out also that severely, when you remove the macrophage, P cell number, total number, decreasing. Okay. So they they found the relationship between P cell and macrophage. Okay. And then here they are using many many different knockout mouse wild type. Wild type, they treat certain chemical to remove macrophage. So minus macrophage, minus neutrophil, both of them, CXCS 17, 13, this is one key chemokine to recruit B cell. They found out, and then they, they added this group here. I will explain later. T, no T cell mouse, no B cell mouse, both of them, TB, Macrophage no, and then when they only collect the macrophage using facts, and then check their gene expression level from the wild type, and then they wild type, but they treat CSF1 receptor inhibitor. This is their target receptor also, which is majorly expressed in macrophage. Okay, and then after understanding this. A number of different number of the condition of the in vivo model. And then figure D is about wild, just wild type increasing. When they collect the macrophage on check, also increasing. Okay. But under treatment of this CSF1 receptor inhibitor, or decreasing. They collect this gene expression level, gene set. Then here, wild type maintain the high gene expression level, and then when they collect, relatively maintained, but under inhibitor, also maintained. So this is not depending on this CSF1 receptor, right? This gene set. Another gene set is wild type high. When they collect the macrophage, no change which means that this gene set is not coming from the macrophage. 
okay but and then still under inhibitor of cs receptor they are decreasing so this FG set so overall how, how can they say that now to depression uh, macrophage specific factors also inhibit by the inhibitor figure D and then figure E center macrophage specific factor but not affected by the inhibitor and figure E uh, sorry figure F on the right panel macrophage associated factor also inhibit also inhibit by the CS1 receptor inhibitor by depletion but not by some cell protein. So let's say if you get the result, maybe without this group, maybe you can see many, many things. And then here, they, they found out this, uh, sorry, they found out Receptor. I want to show why they select the CSF one R receptor. Next. Mm. Okay, from the gene suppression level, maybe they screen out, they study many genes, which kind of genes are change. One macrophage specific factor identify our nanostring analysis was the cytokine. Receptor colony stimulating factor one receptor. This receptor already has been reported play a role in selectively polarizing or modulating macrophage phenotype in cancer. So there are certain reports about in cancer system, this receptor is key for regulating macrophage. So there's why to test whether inhibitor of this receptor could prevent macrophage dependent biomolecular fibrosis. We, met, we examine the exa this inhibitor role. Okay, so why they choose CSF1 receptor? From the literature survey, plus maybe they screen out certain inhibitor, but they didn't include that preliminary study. But luckily, they found they just target this CSF1 receptor. The major role of cytokine receptor colony stimulating factor receptor is they are expressed quite a lot from the macrophage and then previously reported in the cancer system. But when you look at this many gene set here, you can target many, many things, right? Let's say CCL9 or interleukin 13 receptor antagonist, win to one many, many things. But I feel like when you target the, let's say CCL16, CCL6, 66 is chemokine, so when you block, when you want to block it, you have to make antibody system to capture this 66. 66. This is the one thing. But when you target the receptor, you can target, you can easily make the antibody to capture, to mark, to prevent, not to expose this receptor easily, because. This is cell nine. They are all floating surrounding tissue, right? But in case of receptor, they are binding to the cell membrane, easy to target. So as far as I as far as I as far as I remember, as far as I imagine, this is their reason why they target this receptor, not other like uh, chemokine or cytokine. Especially IG one. IG one is also some their function, protein function. When you target protein function, it's not easy to target one thing, right? So function, then remove it. Chemokine, cytokine remove. And the only remaining one is receptor. Okay? So maybe they're one of the candidate, candidate is this receptor. And the receptor antagonist is also one of the secretome. This is receptor. Uh, and the other one is not receptor. This is also receptor, interleukin 10 RB can be receptor. So from the receptor screening and the from literature survey, they target CSF1R. And then they figure out 
this when they remove this CS1 R receptor from the macrophage, they are major receptor located in macrophage. They all uh, inflammation system is diminished, compromised. Okay, and then the other one question is that how you target the CXCL, CXCL13, right? This CXCL13 has been shown to be expressed by monocyte or macrophage and is already reported to be responsible for B-cell recruitment in a model of lymphoid neogenesis. So previously, without this nanostring gene expression level, they correlate macrophage and B-cell, right? So they come to know the role of the B-cell they target this receptor. We can understand CSF, CSF1 receptor. And then they want to link macrophage and B-cell. Initially, only macrophage there. B-cell is later recruited. So when there is some chemokine to call, to recall the B-cell. So when they searched the literature survey, they found out that CXCL13 where it is? Uh, CX over there? CX CX13. <laughs> Top force? Ah, you go? Oh, yes, yes. CX13. Yes. Actually, here, uh, this, this is also. Wild time only macrophage selection, G special level is not that much high. Even the condition, also they target the CXCL17. Okay. Mm. So when they remove CXCL17 from the wild type uh, mouse, when you look at this one, yeah, this gene set uh, here, this gene set is not that much change about this. This one, right? But when you look at this, here also doesn't change that much. Here also doesn't change that much. It's interesting, right? Which means that CXL17, when, when you remove this one, this inflammation from the macrophage majorly is not that much change. Okay? Because this most of this gene expression level is coming from the macrophage. Because this DNA, DEF is from the 14 days. When you look at the 14 days data, 14 days of cell number, here, macrophage is 70 or 80 percent. Even though the P cell is not recruited from the inhibitor, only 5 or 10 percent. And then most of the gene or inflammatory signal is coming from the macrophage. So even though you block the B cell recruitment, so this gene expression level doesn't change that much. And then they look at the real feature of the fibrosis. Let's see. And then, interestingly, the fibrosis, this is a inhibitor of the receptor of macrophage, right? They are all gone. And then even when you block the CXCL13, which recall the B cell from the macrophage, Fibrosis is gone. They confirm by the quantification of a cell. CXL713, B cell recruiting inhibitor. Macrophage is also decreasing neutrophil and B cell are gone. If you block the macrophage function, CSF1 receptor, also gone. Right? And then they prove. This system, this is all coming from the arginate, right? People will ask, this is this system, when you treat the certain one molecule to inhibit fibrosis, is only targeting arginate or that can be suitable for other biomaterial, other type. So they challenge with glass or polystyrene, polymer and ceramic. Okay? And then this is severe fibrosis. When you see many fat or like high tissue, but when you collect the sphere, very clear, right? No fibrosis. Okay? They confirm. No cell here. Mm. 
when they remove macrophage or CS7 receptor inhibitor. But still, uh, they show not from or not only from the arginate, but also from glass and polystyrene. You can see the severe gene suppression level of the inflammation. Because of that, fibrosis happen in control group, control mouse. But from the mouse, when you remove macrophage, or when you treat this inhibitor to induce dysfunction of macrophage, all fibrosis is gone. And then they come from the lower of the CXCL13. This really remove the liquor of the B cell to the material. Not only macrophage also mm, disappear. Fibrosis disappear. B cell disappear. Okay. So interesting point is that when you only remove the CXCL13, not only B cell but also macrophage also disappear. The reason behind is that might be CSCR13 is low, not only recruiting B cell, but also they can recruit macrophage. Or when this B cell is not recruited anymore, there is no power for maintaining the macrophage on the biomaterial. The macrophage also they contact and then they should be clear out, right? So they didn't say detail why this happened, but we can imagine like that. Relative expression of fibrosis marker, fibroblast, they are decreasing. And lastly, they prove their concept in the monkey. Okay, in the monkey, they implant, arginate, day zero, and day 28. And then they found out from implantation, from arginate, you can see, uh, compared to the mark control group surgery, when you implant something, you can see fibrosis surrounding the arginate by material. This is your material. This is fibrosis histological image. Red, red color or so fibrosis imaging. And then they check the B cell recruitment. Little less color here, but figure C is about uh, uh, alpha smart red. And then uh, this CS4 one receptor, oh, sorry, green, to link their previous finding. It is green, green here, CS4 receptor, and alpha sma you can see here. So from the monkey, why they have more fibrosis? They maintained the CSF1 receptor of macrophage, and then alpha sma fibroblast, and then they checked CD11B and CD68. This upper one is macrophage. This one is neutrophil-like. Neutrophil macrophage also heavily deposited in arginate implant tissue, but not in the mark control surgery tissue. Okay, so they show the higher gene suppression level of the inflammation. So. From the previous finding and the last monkey study, they want to link their, the lore of the B cell and macrophage. And then let's uh, visit our material method and figure, supplement figure up to 20. So this is, they used the total list of the in vivo system. There are many mutations using normal C6 mouse fibrosis. So when they implant, they make fibrosis. Complement, they lock out, maintained. Maintain, when they use this macrophage mutant, they decrease. And then when they remove the TB and macrophage, no fibrosis. MFIA, no fibrosis. Macrophage number, no fibrosis. Alpha neutrophil, when you remove it, also still maintain the amount of fibrosis. Okay. Six years 13, decreasing. And then people will ask, your inflammation study, is not a, this really coming from real biomaterial implantation or some endotoxin in the material? They can ask. There is no endotoxin, no immune reaction, and no immune reaction from the toxin of the material.
and then they screen out similarly the number of the macrophage and number of total cell number. Yes, and then this they check other cytokine level from the blood. From the blood, only day one will increase, but over time there is no change of the significant enhancement maintain of the this interleukin series. So, not not that much change of the bloodstream chemokine cytokine because we implant them in local tissue. This is not systematic environment. This is how they do. Yeah, this this is IP area. They implant here and then they collect again from here. You can see. So you can see this little little sphere is a sphere of the implantation. And then they point out this is a little bit fibrosis layer or surrounding here. Yes, like that. So when you implant something, please show this anatomical or on-site on surgery image in supplementary. The people believe it. And then not only the previous macrophage marker, CD68 and TJ beta, late macrophage, macrophage and then fibrosis, also enhanced in capsule and then adjunct tissue area. And they confirmed by Shakespeare 13 level by Western blood. Okay, really enhanced it. And then this is their original feature. So maybe in iTrain, if we optimize this condition also, it can be good. So if you're interested about optimizing this system, maybe we can try it together. Wild type, B cell down, T cell little recovered, T cell, D cell, macrophage all down, going down. Only T cell knockout severely enhanced because there's no T regulation cell. And then C3 and C3 is complement component, which is another inflammatory component of cell. They all they are a little bit also involved, right? And then other cell I confirmed by here. And then from histology, let's here we can see more clearly. This is they can imagine this is a fibrosis layer here, around here, and then when they look at this here, hmm. actually to be honest, uh, when I when I measure the fibrosis layer thickness here, I this can be fibrosis thickness as far as I imagine here thickness. But when you think about this thickness and then compare this, I can I cannot say which one is better. So this is one weak point of this experiment. So this reason why they didn't mention about the thickness change in detail and they didn't show any quantification. From their methodology, methodology means from this upper this image, they are saying that fibrosis is decreasing. And here also, uh, maybe density of the cell number is a little decreasing compared. This is high density, less density. This is relatively sparse. So we can say this is OK. But in case of B cell knockout, I'm not sure, to be honest. And their facts, how they sort the facts. And then they, here they remove the neutrophil macrophage using certain chemicals. So I already bought this chondrogen and then GR1 antibody for depleting neutrophil, depleting chondrogen, depleting macrophage. You can use it. You can find in mechanical box. I already bought, bought it. So they found out that neutrophil and they remove also little decreasing. Macrophage severely, most of them nothing. So fibrosis always major 
a major player, fiber six major player is macrophage and neutrophil. They are severely involved. But people will ask, but if you remove the macrophage and neutrophil in that diabetic patient, you can save the arginate and pancreatic isolate, right? And then you can recover the human. But as you can expect, when you remove macrophage in the human body, they cannot survive, right? They are easily infected. So this is proof of concept study, but this cannot be clinically applicable. So that is why they try to find a single molecule, single target. Here, CXCS13, or a certain receptor, okay? And then when they block that one, it's fine. But when you remove everything, you triple macrophage, this is totally insane situation for treating the patient. So all facts. So this is their initial screening. Actually, uh, okay, this is the initial, when you get, when you ask this experiment in certain company, yeah, this is a set you are getting from the company. But actually, this macrophage sorting group, they can show red and uh, green color. It's not easy to see which tendency, right? So which means that before sending this sample, you already have the answer, okay? Sometimes you cannot have answer properly before sending RNA sequencing or the gene expression sequencing, other things. But you try to search and find the, some clue, maybe hypothesis one, hypothesis two, hypothesis three, and then you sort some little bit gene set, and then you can see the trend. But without that, if you initially get this result, you cannot see anything, right? You cannot see anything. Very many, many genes. Well, how can you know them, right? Okay, so the lower of the CX F1 receptor inhibitor, they confirm. And then here, from the gross anatomy, okay? Okay, once you want to say that your fibrosis disappeared, and then from image you can see, ITC high magnified images. Also, from gross image, this is fibrosis, but you can see no fibrosis here of glass without macrophage under this inhibitor, okay? Always show the real images, and then they will believe you. Here, polystyrene, fibrosis is normal mass, and you do macrophage, nothing, inhibitor, nothing. And then again, gene set. But this gene set is much easier. Compared to mark, three is more high. From the, yeah, all are relatively similar, right? So here we can say that when you implant something, the sterilized biomaterial in certain tissue, inflammation process can be similar. They want to say that. And then another fibrosis related growth factor, VGF, also check here. And then this inhibitor. And then this from the this piece recruiting chemokine inhibitor. And this is from the monkey, yes. Here, they show macrophage and alpha sigma fibroblast, and then yeah, CSF1 receptor. Very small, small, right? Okay, this is the end of this paper. So once again, let's revisit our this paper, this figure. If you implant arginate, glass, polystyrene in subcutaneous or IP, intrapenetrial region, monocyte, macrophage, neutrophil are there, right? And then they up to seven days, they are major. But over seven days, maybe this cascade capturing something from the material. And then they move this molecule to the lymph node and then activate T cell, B cell. This here, they focus on B cell. Activate B cell. P cell is also recruited here, right? So but when you, one thing when you imagine 
but what we are missing here is that the major role of the B cell is secreting antibody, right? But they didn't mention anything about antibody. They only just correlate B cell, B cell location and then fibrosis, okay? So in discussion part, they mentioned that the role of the antibody from B cell should be investigated later. Okay. So here, maybe this time is seven days. And then after seven days, this B cell is recruited in here side, and then they have some function. Okay. And then they are making fibrosis layer. So here this article, how they do? When they block, remove macrophage, no fibrosis. Remove neutrophil, also no fibrosis. Remove the macrophage receptor to, to have certain function, also fibrosis is in inhibited, right? And then when you remove, remove the chemokine, which is secreted the macrophage to recruit the B cell, when they remove it, B cell, when they, once they activate, but they cannot come here. And then also fibrosis is diminished. Okay, so from this uh, feature, you should understand the, you should understand this paper. Okay. So the one take-home message from this paper, the time point. Time point. So when they most of the people they look at the 14 days. When you want to inflammation study like subcutaneous, minimum weekly two weeks. Two weeks. What? In two weeks. You can see fibrosis a little bit, and then here, two weeks later, this uh, macrophage and neutrophil or are they can be major, and then other cell type also coming. Okay, so after reading this paper, I suggest to refer this time point, and then there are many good uh, skip and good knowledge how they approach it. How, how you can target certain molecule, right? Uh, from the clinical point of view, or from the literature survey, you can find many good targeting. Okay, thank you. And then, as you know, this is our last lecture for me. So maybe first three weeks about the calcium imaging, right? So you can give me the two-page report one is about the summary of the that paper, and then one page about your methodology, how you apply the calcium imaging to your study. And then I prepared these two paper related to the immune system. So I also suggest you one page summary of each paper. So you can give me four pages, okay? And then instead of the exam, I did this your task for your exam, okay? To end of this semester. Send me the email. Okay, thank you.